In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. And with your spirit. Welcome to St Mary's Cathedral in Sydney for our solemn pontifical requiem mass for Benedict the 16th. In baptism, Joseph Aloysius Ratzinger. As priest theologian and bishop pastor, as cardinal prefect and close collaborator of Pope St John Paul II, as teacher pope and finally praying Pope Emeritus, he selflessly served Christ and his church for over 70 years. Pope Benedict was the author of 66 books, hundreds of lectures, articles and homilies, umpteen Vatican documents and seven major papal teaching documents. His thought influenced generations of bishops, priests, scholars and lay faithful, will be of enduring significance for centuries to come and may well contribute to his ultimately being recognised as a doctor of the church. The German pontiff will forever hold a special place in the hearts of Australians. He drew the biggest crowds of any papal visit to our shores during the grace-filled World Youth Day in 2008. He consecrated this altar and the image of Our Lady of the Southern Cross here at St Mary's Basilica. He canonised Australia's first saint, Mary of the Cross MacKillop, in 2010. He blessed and opened Domus Australia, the Australian Pilgrim House in Rome in 2011. And finally, he was buried in the very vestment we made for him to wear at the World Youth Day Mass at Randwick. A week ago, I joined hundreds of thousands of lay faithful in Rome, 4,000 priests, 400 bishops, 120 cardinals and one pope in commending this Pope to Almighty God. Now we get to do this here in Sydney, if not on quite the same scale, certainly with the same love. Amongst the Cardinals present was our own beloved Cardinal George Pell. I was in Rome for the funeral and so I got to meet him several times and had two meals with him. He was in sparkling form, witty and wise. I didn't dream it would be the last time I would see him in this life. As we pray for Pope Benedict, his eternal repose, we add a prayer for his friend George, that they might meet merrily in heaven. Can celebrating with me this evening are Bishops Columba Macbeth Green of Wilcannia Forbes, Richard Umbers and Danny Marr, Auxiliaries of Sydney, Peter Ingham, Emeritus of Wollongong, Terry Brady, Emeritus of Sydney, and Monsignor Carl Reed, Ordinary of the Ordinariate of the Southern Cross. I also acknowledge the Vicar General, Vicars, Deans, Rectors, and many other brother priests, along with deacons, seminarians, and other ministers. Also present are many of those who led and contributed to the World Youth Day that Pope Benedict graced here in 2008. Also present are leaders or members of religious congregations, preliatures and movements, knights and dames of the papal orders or orders of Malta or of the Holy Sepulchre, the curia of the archdiocese and directors of its major agencies and ministries. I also salute representatives of the Orthodox churches whose presence is a tribute to Pope Benedict's warm ecumenical relations and ours too here in Australia. I acknowledge in attendance from civil society Her Excellency the Honourable Margaret Beasley, Governor of New South Wales. General the Honourable Sir Peter Cosgrove, former Governor General of Australia with Lady Cosgrove. The Honourable Barry Unsworth, former Premier of New South Wales, and several past and present state and federal ministers and shadow ministers, 
and members of both parliaments. From the diplomatic and consular corps, I salute representatives of Fiji, India, Malta, Namibia, Papua New Guinea, Timor-Leste, the United Kingdom, and of course, Germany. A very warm welcome to everyone present here this evening as we commend our dear departed Benedetto to the God he served so well. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, faithful rewarder of souls, grant that your departed servant, Pope Benedict XVI, whom you made successor of Peter and shepherd of your church, may happily enjoy forever in your presence in heaven the mysteries of your grace and compassion which he faithfully ministered on earth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen.
The first reading is from the book of Job. Job said, Ah, would that these words of mine were written down, inscribed on some monument with iron chisel and engraving tool cut into the rock forever. This I know, that my avenger lives, and he, the last, will take his stand on earth. After my awaking, he will set me close to him. And from my flesh I shall look on God. He whom I shall see will take my part. These eyes will gaze on him and find him not aloof. The word of the Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Think of the love that the Father has lavished on us by letting us be called God's children, and that is what we are. Because the world refused to acknowledge him, therefore it does not acknowledge us. My dear people, 
We are already the children of God, but what we are to be in the future has not yet been revealed. All we know is that when it is revealed, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he really is. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus showed himself to his disciples, and after they had eaten, he said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these others do? He answered, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He replied, Yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, Look after my sheep. Then he said to him a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was upset that he asked him the third time, do you love me? And said, Lord, you know everything, you know I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. I tell you most solemnly, when you are young, 
You put on your own belt and walked where you liked. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and somebody else will put a belt round you and take you where you would rather not go. In these words he indicated the kind of death by which Peter would give glory to God. After this he said, follow me. The Gospel of the Lord. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob and his sons all were keepers of sheep. Abel, Moses and David were also. Like his ancestor Jacob, David called the Lord his shepherd and some of the prophets followed suit. While Israel's leaders often proved to be poor shepherds, God promised them better ones, shepherds after his own heart. Jesus was the fulfilment of this promise. When he saw we were like sheep without a shepherd, lost, scattered, and prey to wolves, he felt compassion and determined to be a good shepherd who knows, leads, and cares for us. He said he'd willingly leave the 99 to save one lost sheep and even lay down his life for his sheep. Good shepherds offer the kind of leadership and care Christ gave and appointed the church's pastors to continue to give. Their selfless love mediates the outpouring of divine love that creates the world and redeems it. Today's Gospel records Jesus' last teaching on what it is to be a pastor in four moments. First, he invites Peter's three professions of love, counterbalancing the three denials before the crucifixion. Secondly, he renews his charge to Peter to be a good shepherd in leading and teaching, a rock for the church, proclaiming Christ uniting and confirming the brethren. Third, he gives him a premonition of what this loving and leading would entail. He'll be taken where he'd rather not go, for the cross awaits all who give true witness to Christ. Finally, reprising Simon's original call at the Sea of Galilee, Jesus says, 
follow me. To lead, the Pope must be a faithful disciple himself. The 265th successor of Peter responded to those same four dimensions of being a chief pastor. As disciple, witness, teacher, and lover. Benedict XVI was, before all else, a follower of Jesus. Preaching in this very cathedral on the 19th of July, 2008, he reminded us that like the new altar he was consecrating, we too have been consecrated, set apart for the service of God and the building up of his kingdom. The world may push God aside in the name of human freedom, pass him over in silence or shun him in the public square. But we disciples of Jesus know he is the key to meeting God and understanding humanity. As this cathedral's magnificent architecture celebrates, Faith, this great disciple explained, is coming to understand the grandeur of our own humanity, the mystery of our life on this earth, and the sublime destiny that awaits us in heaven. It teaches us that we are endowed with an inviolable dignity as God's image and called to eternal life that we must die to self in a continual conversion that brings true freedom and broad vision. And that we can receive the gift of God's love and work to draw all people into the beauty of that love and the light of that truth, which alone brings salvation to the world. Secondly, in faithfully following the Lord, Pope Benedict was taken places he would rather not go. For many decades as a theologian and then prefect of the Congregation for the Doctrine of the Faith, this most charming, gentle, reasoned, humble man was caricatured as a doctrinal Rottweiler by those out of sorts with church tradition. Then at an age when he reasonably expected to be relieved of these pressures and to retire to writing, music and contemplation, he was called to the papacy in a decade of unrelenting scrutiny and criticism of the church's pastors. Yet he accepted this martyrdom this giving witness to Christ through thick and thin until he believed he had no more to give. Quoting our Lord and St John Paul at his inauguration mass, Benedict told us all to be not afraid. Do not be afraid of Christ, he takes nothing away and he gives you everything. When we give ourselves to him, we receive a hundredfold in return. Yes, open wide the doors to Christ and you will find true life. Peter was told to feed not only the sheep, but also the lambs. And this latter-day Peter proved to be an extraordinary teacher and spiritual grandfather to the young at World Youth Day here in Sydney. He led and tutored, united and confirmed, 
with the reliability of rock. To love God requires we know whom we love. Otherwise, we might love a mirage. Ours must be a thoughtful faith, a faith seeking understanding. So the pontiff was a fearless yet subtle proclaimer of the gospel and Catholic doctrine. His keen intellect and deep piety gave him a singular ability to make the truths of faith come alive. As an advisor to and interpreter of the Second Vatican Council, as CDF prefect responsible for guarding the church's faith and morals, as the authority behind many church documents and especially the Catechism of the Catholic Church, and as writer of theological works that will nourish the sheep for centuries to come, Pope Benedict was undoubtedly one of the greatest minds ever to occupy the chair of Peter. Speaking to seminarians and young religious gathered in this cathedral, but also to all of us, His Holiness reprised the Lord's call to walk in the light. Each of you, he said, has embarked on the greatest and most glorious of all struggles, to be consecrated in truth to grow in virtue, to achieve harmony between your thoughts and deeds, words and actions. Let prayer and meditation on God's word be the lamp which illumines, purifies and guides your steps. Make the Eucharist the centre of your life, lifting up your own hearts and lives through Christ, with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, each time a priest raises the host in sacrifice to God. Disciple, witness and teacher, Benedict XVI will be remembered as a faithful Christian who followed his Lord, as a statesman who pleaded for respect for human rights, as a thinker whose wisdom contributed to both church and society, as an ecumenist that brought people of different traditions together under Christ, as an aesthete who appreciated the power of beauty to bring people to God. But he was, above all, a lover, a man who deeply loved Jesus and sought to bring that love to all people. I experienced that warmth and affection on many occasions, including the last time I saw him in his retirement convent when he reminisced about World Youth Day in Sydney and expressed his concerns for Cardinal Pell then wrongly imprisoned. The encounter with God's love in the person of Christ was at the heart of his first encyclical, God is Love, of his three-volume series, Jesus of Nazareth, of his World Youth Day catechesis here in Australia, and of so much of his teaching. When he arrived at Barangaroo, into Papsport, Pope Benedict told the young people that theirs was the mission of boldly and fearlessly proclaiming the greatest love story ever told. That God has become one of us. That the divine has entered human history in order to transform it and that we are called to immerse ourselves in Christ's saving love. 
at his meeting with disadvantaged youth. He warned against counterfeit loves. At the vigil at Randwick, he challenged us to let unifying love be your measure. Abiding love be your challenge. Self-giving love be your mission. As shepherd of the Lord's flock, using his immense intellectual gifts, piety, charm and humility to point people toward the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. Benedict taught us that pastors must above all be disciples, witnesses, teachers and lovers, as indeed must be all the faithful. As Simon Peter was asked three times over, so Benedict heard the Lord ask his successor at the end. Benedict, do you love me? And with his dying words he answered, Lord, I love you. God, the Almighty Father, who raised his Son from the dead, raised up for us as Pope his servant Benedict XVI. Let us entrust him back to our Father in heaven as we offer up our prayers and petitions for him and for the entire world. For our Emeritus Pope Benedict XVI, who was chosen as successor of Saint Peter and Vicar of Christ on earth, after first receiving the seed of eternal life in baptism, that God may be pleased to admit him forever to the company of the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For His Holiness, Pope Benedict XVI, who served as Supreme Pontiff, Universal Shepherd, and Servant of the Servants of God, that the sacrifice he offered in life may bring him to eternal glory. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all the bishops of the church, that the sacred office to which they are called will be served faithfully and will continue to bear good fruit for the church in every land. Let us pray to the Lord. For Catholics throughout the world who were richly impacted by the life and teaching of Pope Benedict XVI, that they will be filled with the hope that leads to everlasting life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all people who Pope Benedict engaged with throughout his life, who do not know, who do not share our faith, that seekers of truth and people of goodwill may come to know and share in the life God has prepared for them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed that Christ will bring those who have died to his eternal joy, especially those who died forgotten or abandoned. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's ask Our Lady, the Theotokos, the Mother of God and Mother of Mercy, who prays for us now and at the hour of our death, 
to pray for eternal life with us for George Cardinal Pell, the eighth Archbishop of Sydney, as we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Lord God of our salvation, together with all the saints gathered in the assembly of your elect, hear the prayers of those who call out to you with supplication for the soul of your servant and our Pope, Emeritus Benedict XVI, who we entrust to you with the prayer of the Church through Christ our Lord.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. We pray, O Lord, that through these devoted offices of supplication, you may mercifully bestow a blessed reward on the soul of your servant, Pope Benedict XVI, and on us, your gifts of grace, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through who Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and me, your unworthy servant, Richard and Danny, my assistant bishops, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants, and all gathered here, whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever Virgin Mary, mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmas and Damien, and all your saints. 
we ask that through their merits and prayers, in all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and confess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant, Abel the Just the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants, Joseph and George, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light and peace. To us also, your servants, who those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share with the fellowship of your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity Perpetua, Agatha Lucy, Agnes Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints, admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever.
at the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom of God, glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Glória ao Pai.
Let us pray. Renewed by the sacrament of our communion with you, our God, we pray, O Lord, that your servant, Pope Benedict XVI, who served by your will on earth as the visible foundation of your church's unity, may be happily admitted to your blessed flock, through Christ our Lord. Amen. My thanks to all who have contributed to this beautiful liturgy tonight. I guess many of us will meet again for another requiem in two or three weeks' time when we hope the body of Pope Benedict's friend and ours, Cardinal Pell, is repatriated to Australia. I expect both are now interceding for us here in Sydney, but we should also continue to intercede for them. Details of the funeral mass and other liturgies will be published soon. We give thanks to Almighty God for our last Pope and pray also for our present one. We echo Pope Francis's prayer for his predecessor, Benedict, faithful friend of the bridegroom. May your joy be complete as you hear his voice now and forever. Vale, beloved Benedetto. The Lord be with you. And with your Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. Who made heaven and earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Forth the masses and